Hi, this is Roro. Welcome to Roro Rants. I didn't make a video yesterday. I did post on Facebook, but I was kind of depressed and I really didn't know what to say. And I wanted to work through all of my emotions first before I made a video. And um, because I was really disappointed with the country as a whole, with Trump voters and also that Jill Stein got such a low percentage of the vote. Um, but uh, now that I've had a chance to process everything, I just wanted to give my opinion and offer some hope for the future because the, the revolution isn't over. And the good news is that Hillary won the popular vote and we have to remember that because that's very important. So anyway, what we've learned from this election is the public has spoken and the message they're saying is loud and clear. Not that they want Republican policies, that is not the message. Not that they want President Trump, that's not it. The message is that they are sick and tired of establishment politics. Uh, there are some that voted for him because they're Republicans or because they're white supremacists or Nazis, bigots, but you got to remember, only 13.3 million people voted for Trump in the primary. More people voted for Bernie than that in his primary, and he lost. So if you add up the Bernie and Clinton votes, that's like double. So our country is more progressive than Republican. And as far as Bernie, that's only the ones they counted. That's not counting all the ones that they suppressed because of the election fraud. And that's also not counting all the people that showed up as rallies and that wanted to vote for him but couldn't because of the voter suppression called closed primaries and all that. You know, I'm sure there might have been some that, you know, for Trump, but not, I don't know, whatever. But anyway, you know, so 13.3 million people voted for Trump in the primary, but in the general, 57 million people voted for him. So most of these people were just voting against Hillary, not for Trump. And I, I see it on social media. You know, I'm on there like eight to 10 hours a day. I know these people. They were never Hillary. They were not pro-Trump. Most of these people were Bernie supporters. They were angry. They were pissed about being screwed in the primary. Now, my opinion, it's stupid because by voting for Trump, they did not hurt Hillary. They only hurt all of us. They didn't hurt the media. They didn't hurt Hillary's campaign. They didn't hurt the DNC. None of those people are going to suffer under a Trump presidency. They don't care. They're rich. They're not going to have any problems. We're the ones that are going to suffer. My niece, who's worrying about how she's going to pay her son's medical bills, when they repeal Obamacare and the 20 million other people who are going to get thrown off their Medicaid, you know, because Medicaid expansion covers 20 million more working people. They're the ones who are going to suffer, not Hillary. Hillary is going to be fine. All the American children of illegal immigrants who are worried now that their parents are going to get deported and what are they going to do? Where are they going to go? Where are they going to live? They're the ones who are going to suffer, not Hillary. Um, all the students who won't get student loans now in the future anymore because they're going to de defund the Department of Education. They're the ones who are going to suffer. No, they're not going to be able to go to college. We're, we're going to have all our universities full of foreign students now because Americans aren't going to be able to go to college. All the people who live in communities near flood zones and areas along coastlines that are going to get flooded because of global warming. because. It's gonna get worse. Those are the people who are gonna suffer. All the people who get sick because they defund the FDA, they're the ones who are gonna suffer. Hillary and all the rich politicians and the 1%, they're gonna be just fine. So the people who voted for Trump to try to punish Hillary are only punishing all of us. And just like I predicted, the Republicans won the House and the Senate because people are stupid and they don't understand how the government works. And they just vote down the whole ticket, all red. And uh, so there's gonna be no resistance to Trump either. We can still protest, but we're gonna have a hell of a fight against on our hands now. And you know, after Trump's acceptance speech, I was hoping that Trump would turn out to be 
more liberal on some things, but uh, looks like he's picking all Republicans, right-wing people for his cabinet too. You know, somebody posted to me, well, we already have high costs for health care. We already have uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline. We already have students that can't pay their student loans and deportations and Planned Parenthoods are closing. Well, yeah, I agree. All those things are bad. And they're about to get a lot worse because Trump's plans on his website, yeah, we already have high costs for health care. Well, how about repealing Obamacare and all the working poor will have no insurance like it used to be during Bush? Are you old enough to remember what it was like under the Republicans? No insurance for the poor people? No more Medicaid expansions? The insurance companies can just fuck us whenever they want, just drop people when they get sick? Uh, if, you're, if your son's in college, your kid's in college, and they get sick and have to come home and drop out of school, then they drop them because they're not a student anymore. Uh, people are close to retirement age and they get sick and they just drop them. And then they have to choose between life or death. They have to choose do they spend all their life savings, sell their house for their medical bills, or do they just die so that their spouse can have a retirement? Uh, you know, you're complaining about this Dakota Access Pipeline. Well, Trump wants more pipelines, more drilling, more fracking, public lands, private lands, everything. It's going to get worse. You're complaining that students can't pay their loans. Well, Trump wants to get rid of the Department of Education. So you're not going to have any more 7% uh, government-backed loans. You're going to have to rely on banks to give you loans who are going to deny anybody with bad credit and charge you like any percentage they want, 20%, 30%. It's going to get worse. Uh, we already have deportation. Try deporting 11 and a half million people. You know, you say we already have Planned Parenthood's closing. Try making abortion illegal. That's what Trump wants to do. And there's going to be no resistance because he's going to appoint Supreme Court justices. And he's, gonna, he's got the House and the Senate. They're going to pass you know, make abortion illegal. So, and they're not going to have, you know, health restrictions or restrictions for rape or incest. So it's going to be like other countries, like in South America, that 10 year old girl who got raped by her father and died in childbirth because she's too young to have a baby. We're going to end up like that. You know, our government has just shifted completely to the right, all three branches. The right is the wrong fucking direction. We're progressives. We want to move to the left. I feel like I'm talking to a bunch of idiots who don't know they're left from their right. You know, I'm not saying that I'm the smartest person in the world, but I do know my left from my right. Republicans are right. We're progressives. We are to the left. It's really that simple. You vote for the candidate who's going to fight for the policies that you agree with. You might not agree with all of them, but then at least you have a chance of getting them. You don't vote for all the wrong policies to punish a candidate that has most of your policies, but you just want to punish her. That's stupid. If the Democrats had won, we would have had Bernie as the Senate majority leader or budget committee chair, and, and he would have helped us to fight this revolution. That's why he kept telling everybody to vote for Hillary because he would have been able to lead this revolution. But anyway, I'm, uh, I gotta stop ranting about what ifs because that's all in the past. We have to be positive and think ahead. So let's think about what we're gonna do next because we still have to fight this revolution. We're not gonna give up. It's just gonna be a lot harder now. Um, and you know, if you look at the results, most of the people who voted for Trump were independents who were just sick of establishment politics. You know, I'm, I got a couple links down there. If you look at the people who registered, um, if you look at the, there's 27% Republicans, 32% Democrats, and 40% independents. Now that has gone up from before. The, the Democrats have gone up. That means a lot of people registered as Democrats to support Bernie. Um, it was back in January when I reported it before, it was 29% Democrats, 26% Republicans, and 44% independents. It's still a lot of independents. Most people in this country are independent. They don't give a shit about the two parties. But anyway, the Democrats went from 29 to 32, an increase of 3%, whereas the Republicans only went up 1%.
so that's good. So the point, most of the electorate is independent and also a lot more registered to vote for Bernie than registered to vote for Trump. So another statistic is the voter turnout it was very low for this election. And I also put the link below, I go to this voter turnout and I crunched the numbers. I took the numbers from that spreadsheet and made my own spreadsheet with the things, things that I wanted. And I also put a picture of that. I compared the 2008 election for Obama and then the re-election for 2012 and then this election and if you look at the voter turnout for Hillary it was much lower. There just wasn't the, the enthusiasm like we had for Obama. In 2008 we had 62% of the VEP, that's the voting eligible population. Now we also have the voter voting age population. Uh, the difference between that is the eligible people are the ones who are registered. Not all voting age people register to vote. And then this year, so for Obama, it was 62%. This year it was only 55%. So we did not have a big turnout because people just weren't excited about Hillary. Um, we had the worst choice of candidates in history. If we had had Bernie, there would have been a much bigger turnout. You could see it by the rise in the registered Democrats. I don't understand how the Democratic campaign, they, how stupid they were to let Hillary be the nominee. You know, there would have, and if there weren't deadlines, can you imagine if there weren't deadlines in the primary and they could just register the same day? All those people, that, it would have been a huge turnout. It would have been huge. So we need to figure out what are we gonna do next with this revolution? Are we going to just support the Green Party? Are we going to try to reform the Democratic Party? You know, Jill said you can't build a revolution in a counter-revolutionary party. So we need to unite. We need to figure out what we're going to do. Um, I like what Michael Moore said. He has a to-do list. He had the morning after to-do list. It was, he has, a um, let's see, it was five points. And the first point said, take over the Democratic Party and return it to the people. They failed us miser miserably. That means no more rigging primaries. We, we have to have open primaries. We need transparency in government and we need representatives who do what their electorate wants. If they don't, vote them out. Uh, he said that we need to fire all the pundits, predictors, pollsters, and get, you know, to get rid of them all. You know, a lot of times they're paid and they can't say what they want, you know, they're the the corporate media but you know just fuck them listen to independent media on YouTube we will tell you the truth uh, go to real progressives you know Steve Grumbine great on economics don't get caught up in the idea that taxes fund spending taxes don't fund spending uh, if you if you listen to him and you realize that then the options are endless and you don't get caught up in that anymore you know, we have all this money for war when we want to go to war, but there's no money for universal health care. There's no money for all the things we want. That's bullshit. So watch Steve Grumbine. Um, and also on Real Progressives, there's Jack, Jacqueline Lukeman, Sandy. I love Sandy and Kendall and Arne Menconi. There's other channels that are great. Kyle on Secular Talk, Mike Figueroa on The Humanist Report, uh, TYT, those guys are great. Uh, ben Dixon, Tim Black, one of my favorite shows. Uh, he's a great performer. Uh, the New Progressive, he's really good with numbers and facts and things. Uh, Redacted Tonight is great. Lee Camp, he's hilarious. He's a comedian. He is so funny. I love him. Um, and then uh, Anoa Changa, she's on Ben Dixon a lot. Garland Nixon, he's a radio uh, DJ, but he's very political. He's got a lot of really good stuff. And of course, the same progressive, Debbie, she's great. She's a lot like me. Not as crass as me, but she's passionate. Um, Anyway, go, going on, his third point, any Democratic member of Congress who didn't wake up this morning ready to fight, resist, and obstruct the way the Republicans did against Obama every day for eight full years must step out of the way and let those of us who know the score lead the way in stopping the meanness and the madness that's about to begin. So yes, we need to get our Democratic representatives to fight. Um, everyone must stop saying that they are stunned and shocked. What do you mean to say that you were in a bubble and you weren't paying attention? Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, I was paying attention. I was watching what was being said on social media. I knew Hillary was going to lose. I knew Bernie would have been the better candidate. Um, and then number five, you must say the sentence to everyone you meet today. This was yesterday. Hillary Clinton won the popular vote. The majority of our fellow Americans preferred Hillary over Donald Trump, period. Fact. 
If you woke up this morning thinking you live in a fucked up country, you don't. The majority of your fellow Americans wanted Hillary, not Trump. The only reason he's president is because of an arcane, insane 18th century idea called the Electoral College. Until we change that, we'll continue to have presidents we didn't elect and didn't want. Okay, this is a good one. This is so true. Remember, Hillary won the popular vote. The only reason we have the Electoral College, okay, this is how the Electoral College works. It makes the white vote in the South, where they in the South, they suppress the minority vote. They've been doing it for years. They got all these voter ID laws. They try, they have police there trying to intimidate them. They do all this stuff. So the white vote in the count in the South counts for more. And then the vote in the Midwest, where people are 99% white in the Midwest anyway, they take the South and the Midwest, that whole part of the country that looks red on the map, and they make those votes count for more than the votes in the blue states on the coasts, you know, the coastlines and the Rust Belt. So those areas on the coast, they look smaller on the map, but there's more people there. So that's the majority of the people. And those are where have the largest populations of minorities. So they do this to suppress the minority vote. The Electoral College is the most effective means of suppressing the minority vote today, and it must be abolished. So Michael Moore goes on to say, you live in a country where a majority of its citizens have said they believe there's climate change. They believe women should be paid the same as men. They want debt-free college education. They don't want us invading countries. They want to raise in minimum wage. They want single-payer, true universal health care. None of that has changed. We live in the country where the majority agree with the liberal position. We just lack the leadership to make that happen. And for that, see number one above about the, about the um, take over the Democratic Party and return it to the people because the leaders that we have are not representing us. And then he made a day two list today. That's what took me so long to make this video. I wanted to get out here earlier. It's dark out now. Anyway, his day two list. Uh, number one, must quickly and decisively form an opposition movement the likes of which hasn't been seen since the 1960s. Yay! This is what we need. I will do my part to help lead this. That's Michael Moore talking. As I'm sure many others, Bernie, Elizabeth Warren, Move On, Occupy Wall Street, Black Lives Matter, we all need to unite. We're all progressives. We all want the same kind of change. We all have the same values don't tolerate bullshit and we're relentless in their resistance to authority. We have no interest in compromising with racists or misogynists. We do not let them in our group. So li libertarians, no, they're not in with us. They are racists. They are, they don't, they're not climate change protectors. They're, anyway, okay. Number two, prepare to impeach Trump. I don't know if I agree with this one. I don't want Pence. Pence is a hard right Republican. With Trump, we don't know what he's going to do. He has actually said some things that sound Democrat, that sound liberal. He says, I mean, what he's saying for health care, it sounds like universal health care. He's saying he wants everybody to have insurance. Um, maybe he wants to do this. Maybe he won't repeal Obamacare until they have a plan that's good that will, you know, who knows? Let's see what he does. If he gets Republicans talking in his ear, he's not going to do it. But, and also he said he wants to, to, to give everybody maternity leave. So some of the things, you know, he used to be a Democrat. Maybe he'll be liberal. I think Pence would be much worse. So I don't know if I agree with number two, because if the left wants to impeach him and the right wants to impeach him because he's too left, he may get impeached. And then we're going to get stuck with Pence, who is much worse than Trump. So uh, I would like to impeach him just as a, you know, protest thing, but I don't really want him to get impeached. And with the right doesn't like him either, he might get impeached. Um, on number three, must commit right now to a vigorous fight, including civil disobedience if necessary. Block any and all Donald Su Trump Supreme Court nominees. We demand that the Democrats in the Senate aggressively filibuster any nominees who support Citizen United or oppose the rights of women, immigrants, and the poor. This is a big one. Yeah, filibuster. Bernie will help us with that. Number four, demand the DNC apologize to Bernie Sanders. That's great. Number five, get Obama to investigate who was behind FBI 
Director James Comey's illegal interference in the presidential election, I think it really did sway people that it was just before the election. I think he did that on purpose. James Comey is a Republican. Number six, begin a national push while it's still fresh in everyone's mind for a constitutional amendment to fix our broken electoral system. This is important. Eliminate the electoral college. Paper ballots only. No electronic voting. Election day must be made a holiday for all or held on a weekend so more people can vote. All citizens, regardless of any run-ins with the criminal justice system, must have the rights to vote. Very important. Number seven, convince President Obama to immediately do what he should have done a year ago, send in the Army Corps of Engineers to Flint to dig up and replace all poisoned water pipes. Nothing has changed. The water's still unusable. So Michael Moore said, we need to get these done by tomorrow. That's very aggressive. Anyway, um, so it's true. We need to have a plan. Right now, there are so many groups split up all over the place. There's Our Revolution. There's Brand New Congress. I think there's Bernie Kratz. I don't know. Is that a thing? There's so many, there's also so many progressive third parties or fourth parties, whatever you want to call them. There's the Green Party, there's the Democratic Socialists, there's Communists. Don't count the Libertarians, of course. They're separate. They have totally different values than us. But all the other ones I mentioned, we're all the same. We have the same values. We should all join forces. This is part of the reason progressives always lose, because we're not united. If we can all unite, we can take the House in 2018 and there's 33 seats up for Senate. That way, all these ignorant fuckheads that came out to vote for Trump, they're not gonna come out in the midterms. Half the Democrats won't come out either. Only about 20% of the Republicans that voted in the general for Trump came out for the primary. And if you look at the, uh, the site and look at the midterms, they don't come out for midterms. People don't come out for them in big numbers. So we could take back the House and the Senate in 2018, but we have to start now. Join the protests in your nearest cities. Get involved. Find out who the candidates are. Start helping them now. Start donating. I'm old and I'm sick, but I'm going to try to do as much as I can. So it's not the end of the world. You know, we survived eight years of Bush. We're going to survive two years of Trump. So it's only going to be two years. After we take back the House and the Senate, we're going to just block everything he wants to do. He's going to be a lame duck. So that's what we're going to plan to do. So anyway, thank you for watching and sorry for the rant, but I hope I brought some hope to everybody because there is hope. There's a lot of good people in this world, in this country. Thanks. Bye.